probably the most important question that any new photographer needs to know. How do I make money? This is the Cardi method. Just make a list of all the things that you love to shoot. Next to each one of those things that you love to shoot, write down three businesses that would hire you to do that type of work. Now, if you notice that you're having a hard time thinking of the three types of businesses that would hire you, is because you're making work for you instead of making work for potential clients. No one is gonna hire you based on you shooting unniched work. So you have to go back to that list of all the things that you like to shoot and start with these three headers, people, places, and things. Now categorize all those things that you listed that you love to shoot under one of those umbrellas. So once you do that, now start checking like, who would hire me? What kind of companies would hire me to shoot all of those things that you like? Now, if you find that most of the things that you like to shoot are people related, super easy to find businesses or people who would hire you to shoot headshots, corporate headshots, fashion photography, editorial portraits, weddings, like there's so much under the people umbrella. There's also so much under the places umbrella. The places is real estate, architecture. I mean, real estate and architecture are the massive niches under the places, umbrellas, interiors. There's so much when it comes to if you love shooting places. Many people think landscapes. I'm trying to get you to shift your mindset into architecture and working with designers, architects, and real estate agents to sell homes. And if you like to shoot things rather than just, oh, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, think about shooting product photography, think about shooting cars, think about shooting electronics, like think about all of the things that you could specialize in shooting that could equal money. That's the first thing that anybody who's trying to make money with their camera needs to do. Like, if you're making photos for you, it, it's a hard thing to hear, but if you're making photos for you, nobody cares. Really, nobody cares. You have to make photos for other people, meaning a business, a small business, a, someone who's trying to get their startup going, uh, an actor who's trying to get headshots going, a model who's trying to be a professional. Like there's so many different angles of people who have a reason that they need photography in order to make their thing go forward. That's, that's how you do it. There's no real point in making photos just for you. People, uh, people are searching on YouTube how to make money from street photography. Or, or what's the street photography business model? Well, I wanna know what it is too, because sadly, there really isn't a business model for doing street photography that I know about other than, literally, other than just simply selling prints and selling books. Like, I can't, Street photography is a hard hustle, man. There's like, I do it, but I do it not to make money. I do it to meet people and shoot portraits and those connections of those people who I meet on the street, I might shoot them again and it might turn into something. So I'm just looking for the right people. And also if I'm just shooting architecture or shooting what I call nothing pictures because they don't, they're not relevant to my niche, it's more of an exercise. It's more of like uh, seeing location, seeing light, like my like creative on demandness. Like that's what I'm working on when I'm doing street photography. The work that I'm making is not to sell. It's not to get money. It's just an exercise, if that makes any sense. So that's how I would start to figure out what type of photography I should be making. Because when you notice like there's nobody who would hire you, you can't think of any businesses that would hire you to make the type of work that you make. It means you're making the, one, the wrong work. 
make different work. So there's lots of people who would hire you to make that type of work. A friend of mine who, I mean, he's a friend, he started as an assistant. He was trying to be a portrait photographer and he shot tons and tons and tons of portraits and his portraits were good. But then he started shooting product and his products, his product photography was spectacular. And spectacular makes good look like shit. I'm sorry to say, but when you deal with spectacular photography and spectacular photographers, when you see just good photography, it looks garbage. So you have to work on what can I be spectacular at that people looking at my work are like, whoa. And here's another example. Um, Scott Cicino from Tin House Studio. Many of you watch Tin House Studio, I'm sure, that watch me as well. Scott Cicino used to be a portrait photographer, failed as a portrait photographer, started shooting food and beverage, and blew up. He is a way better food and beverage photographer than he ever was a portrait photographer. Is that something that's easy to admit? Probably not, but it's true. So seeing his business excel, his YouTube channel excel, because he talks about food and beverage, that's his specialty, and that's what he's realizing that he can truly excel in and make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year.